tiny accessory box. Time for me to go all 2001, like, you know, the black monolith. All right, you know why you're here, but you, are you why you're here? I don't know. Let me introduce myself. I'm Wendell, this is level one. We do a lot of serious computation around here. Well, most of the people in the audience do a lot of serious computation. It's like day job stuff, but we don't talk about it because it brings about the existential dread and, uh, you know, work stuff every day, cleaning up someone else's idiocy. Welcome to computer janitoring. I can computer janitor at least five times faster with my current production systems. That's really exciting. The box system, the dual threadripper system, if you're gonna build a big boy system like that, or even a high-end threadripper system, uh, you need a big case. And, uh, Fractal's got you covered. It is available in two versions, a light tempered glass and a dark tempered glass. This is the dark version. Oh, my sound sounds different now. This is the Fractal Meshify 2 XL. So this is the case that you need if you need 18 mechanical hard drives or 17 GPUs or you've got an SSI EEB motherboard or an SSI CEB motherboard or any, you know, pretty much any giant Brobdignagian motherboard. The uh, Supermicro motherboard that's in that box workstation, it's a little bigger than ATX. This is a good choice for it if you're going to DIY that. Notice on the inside, it's got this open layout, and so right out of the box, you've got two sleds that are included. You could do six mechanical hard drives and two SSDs. It comes with three multi-brackets. The multi-brackets will hold drives or water pumps or whatever you want. They'll mount to the case, but you can also kind of mount them you know, where a fan goes or in the bottom of the case. There's also an extra multi-bracket position right on the PSU shroud that you can set on the bottom. That's where I initially put the pump on my other defined build, but this one, I'm not sure yet because the parts aren't here. Now, pro tip, Fractal, the uh, EK performance kit comes with a bracket like that to hold the pump, but it holds it far enough away from the fan and the amount of metal is small enough that it doesn't really block airflow. I would love to see a version of the multi-bracket where you could actually mount it to a 120 millimeter fan and there's actually enough airflow around the bracket in order to be able to deal with whatever, but also without being flimsy. That may be impossible with this universe's laws of physics. Now in terms of radiator support, uh, this case is crazy. You can have a 480 millimeter radiator in the top or the front, but not both, but you could do a 480 and a 360. You can also do 280s and 420s in the top, but you've only got about 35 millimeters of motherboard clearance, 35 to 38, something like that. It depends on where the tall components are on your motherboard and your fan position and how thick the radiator is. One of the things that I really like about this case is how much headroom you have over the motherboard. This is a thing, like, like if you're building a high-end system like this and you're doing a custom loop, or even if you're doing an AIO, thick radiators with lots of fans or even a push-pull fan configuration, kind of the new norm. Being able to put the radiator in the top of the machine so you exhaust all the hot air directly out of the top of the machine is nice. Uh, it also helps muffle the sound from the computer a little bit and all that, all that sort of stuff. So having that extra headroom at the top that's a big deal, and I like that this case has that. I'll also point out at the top of the case that the brackets and stuff are removable, so you can just completely remove everything at the top of the case, and it's super easy to plug in things like CPU power and uh, mount your fans on the brackets once they're removed, and then be able to sort of slide all that together and then only have a couple of screws to take it out if you gotta deal with it. There's also a fill port plug, so you can leave yourself plenty of slack on your tubing and actually mount your fill port to the top of the case, and it's still removable. It's also big enough you can put a radiator, a small radiator, in the bottom. You know, something like a 240 millimeter would be no problem at all, even with the other radiator in the front. There's a total of 13 pass-through holes with 10 rubber grommets. It comes with five Velcro straps, and there's 16 additional tie-down points, so all the cable management you want to do, you can do. There's also this detachable PSU cable shield, which we saw on the Define 7 XL, the, the other one. And uh, that worked really well for hiding my, uh, hiding my sins. It comes with the Nexus 2 Slim PWM Fan Hub. This is sort of a new low profile that fits directly into the cable channel. So it's easier to route your cables and you don't have to have super long fan cables, which is nice. That was a problem that I ran into on the Define XL, but not a huge deal. I mean, you know, fan extensions aren't really a big deal. So overall totals, we've got, in terms of three and a half slash two and a half drive mounts, there's six included, but 16 positions in total. You can get more shelf brackets if you want to hold those three and a half inch hard drives. Um, in terms of dedicated two and a half inch mounts, there's two that are included, but there's five positions total. Now, unlike the Define 
XL, there's not any five and a quarter inch bays. The Defined XL has two. There's nine expansion slots plus three vertical expansion slots, and it is compatible with, you know, EATX, ATX, of course, micro ATX, ITX, if you're a really crazy person, EEATX, SSI CEB, and SSI EEB. I've got the Gigabyte TRX40 Extreme in the other case, and it is insane. It's a huge motherboard. It's really tall so that you've got lots of extra room around your PCIe slots because it's got four, you know, by eight or by 16 electrical PCIe slots, which is just pretty much the norm for Threadripper. And uh, that's a lot of room. If we're talking about motherboards like the Super Micro motherboard in the box computer, yeah, it's also enormous and has a lot of PCIe slots. And having the extra room means that you can hang a GPU off the end of the motherboard and it's fine, assuming that you've got cable clearance. Included in the case is three Fractal Design Dynamic X2 GP14 fans. These are 140 millimeter fans, 25 millimeters thick. They're up to 1000 RPM, 18.9 dBA, 68.4 CFM with a static pressure of 0.71. Uh, millimeters of H2O. I have personally discovered that if you stick your fingers into those fans while they are operating at 1000 RPM, they break away rather than really mess up your fingers. So that's nice, probably. Also wanna plug this optional accessory, because Fractal sent it to me because they saw the terrible, terrible things that I did for vertical GPU mounting in the previous video. Shh. This is the Fractal Flex B20 vertical riser bracket. So this, you can actually take out all of your existing expansion slots and install this. This doesn't technically use the three vertical slots that are on this case if you don't want it to. You don't have to do it that way. You can kind of see there's a picture. The picture shows you the correct way to install it and also the installation PDF. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can simply unmount this bracket and mount it where the vertical riser is, the three expansion slots. And so you can do like I do where I use all of my slots and I'm actually sort of using this as a hack so that I can cram more bigger peripherals in where otherwise there wouldn't physically be enough room, but electrically there's enough room, I'm cheating. Now keep in mind this is PCI Express 3.0 only, this is not PCI Express 4 compatible. If you try to use this with a PCI Express 4 GPU, you'll get crashes and artifacts and weird problems. Everybody's working on a good, reliable PCI Express 4 riser. I know you're gonna be tempted by the AliExpress listings, but trust me, I've got three and they all suck. They're varying levels of suck. Like some of them are almost okay. It's like almost usable, but just because it's almost usable doesn't mean you wanna use it. I mean, you could use a string of wet paper clips to uh, use as an extension cord to power a vacuum cleaner, but you wouldn't want to. It's kind of like that with those PCI Express 4 ribbon cables. This one, PCI Express 3, and it's reliable at PCI Express 3. The other nice thing about this is that this should mostly work in a lot of cases that aren't Fractal. They actually do have a full compatibility guide at fractal-design.com, so you can check that out before you buy this, and it'll say, hey, yes, this is gonna be compatible with this if you wanna use like the full bracket thing, or if you wanna unbolt the bracket and just use the ribbon cable and a slot, you can use it that way as well. Now, whereas the other Fractal Define XL case, the other XL variant of this case, it's not the Meshify, it comes with two different tops, a top with holes and a top that doesn't have holes. And this case only comes with the vented top. So this case is meant for airflow and not quiet operation. Now for my other build, I was interested in a quiet machine, but quiet can also imply heat retention. So with that system, it works really well in terms of quiet and airflow. You can definitely hear a running air sound, but uh, it's not super loud and it's not annoying. And there's not a lot of noise, even when the chipset fan is on, when you're using a TRX40 motherboard that has a chipset fan, because some people have complained that that chipset fan is a little whiny. It varies from motherboard to motherboard. Mostly it hasn't been an issue in my experience, but in a case that's got sound dampening, you're not gonna hear it. This case is larger. It's made for airflow. So you could theoretically have a better experience in terms of cooling capacity. I'm gonna use this for a 64 core threader per build. Let's take a look at the system that I'm using now. If you've been following on the level one forums or uh, some of the chats that I've been getting into, I mean, some of the stuff I posted on Twitter and other stuff, we've been doing a lot of software development, compiling Clash of Titans, which I've covered before, and uh, cross compiling open embedded. That's also what I've been running on the 64 core system, along with some other web development things like uh, using Selenium and uh, Vagrant and doing things like automated Drupal testing and um, stuff like that, like software developer stuff. And my goodness, these systems are insane. 
64 cores. Uh, right now it's got 128 gigs of memory, but usually it has 256. 192 gigs of memory. The box system is much faster in terms of memory bandwidth, so certain things run faster. Just picked up several of these. The Optane uh, SSD DC P4800X series. 375 gigs of Optane, enterprise class Optane. So fast, lots of endurance. I can augment that with my not super fast, but relatively high capacity, four and 6.4 terabyte, you know, P4500, P4510 SSDs. And I've also got the Sabrent Rocket, four terabyte NVMe. Uh, this is an M.2. This is a tiny little, tiny little gum stick. The M.2 form factor, the U.2 form factor, and they're the same capacity, which is sort of insane. Technically the P4500 has a lot more flash cells because the rocket is, you gotta check out the rocket review. But anyway, putting U.2 devices in all of that, it's a little problematic in the Antec system. So I'm really looking forward to stuffing that system in the new Meshify. Let's, let's get to it. All right, I'm back on day two. In case it's not apparent, but my change of clothes. I mean, you know, there are some people that are like, oh, you should keep the same clothes on because my immersion. I don't, I don't do that. Okay, well, maybe I do do that sometimes for some reasons, but not that reason. 64 cores of pure, unadulterated insanity. Look, this thing, it's its the Asus Extreme Alpha Zenith 2. They had to do, you know, they did the Extreme, then they did the Extreme Alpha when the 64 core came out, because, well, well, some things needed upgrading. They needed to do some revisions, some lessons learned. This motherboard is one of two motherboards that worked with 3600, 256 gig. The other being MSI, which I gave to Greg Crow Hartman, in, which is kind of a big deal. Not really a big deal, I guess, but it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to live vicariously, to be like, hey, have you experienced the awesomeness of Threadripper? No? Okay. Well, let me show you. So the Meshify 2 XL comes with every accessory thing you'd need. You've got a bunch of M3 mounting screws, a bunch of 6-32 mounting screws, 36 hard drive dampeners, five additional motherboard standoffs, four power supply screws, 36 drive standoff screws, uh, a standoff installation tool, that's for the motherboard, and a bunch of cable ties that are one-time use, not Velcro. It comes with the Velcro ones built in, what do you want? For this motherboard, you actually have to unscrew, you don't have to, but you should, because there's not a screw hole for it, uh, one of the top mounts, because, see the screw here on the top? There's no actual hole for it, because it's covered by this giant heat sink because giant heat sinks are a thing. I mean, I guess it would be fine if you left the standoff because Asus was very careful not to put any components or pads or anything there, but maybe that's just me. Let me just lower this down so you can see better. Look how much headroom you have. Look at that, that's crazy. But well, here's the real mind blowing trick. Two screws. Look how much easier it is to work along the top and the edge of the motherboard without this in there. You can plug everything in a lot easier, but more importantly, you can mount your big chunk and radiator. Yeah, so this is a bits power radiator. Look how thick that is. That's insane. That's completely insane. Normally this would be a radiator that you could only mount in the front because it's so thick. Yeah, so check it out. We'll just, we're just doing a little bit of a test fit here. So because of the mounting solution here and because this is only a 360 millimeter radiator, it's not super long. We've got a lot of clearance to the top of the motherboard. So it's gonna clear the VRM heatsink, even though it sticks a little below where the VRM heatsink starts. Like it doesn't clear the top edge of the motherboard because the radiator is so thick. If I had a thinner radiator, it would be no problem. But because we can mount the radiator all the way that way toward the front of the case, there's no clearance issues here. This is great. On today's episode of how not to set up your custom loop radiator, you would drain the loop and uh, do it that way. But this has already been leak tested, so I'm not gonna mess with it. Now I've got my radiator and my pump mounted. There's quite a bit of clearance between the back edge of the pump and the motherboard. I would say a little less than a centimeter, give or take. And that's pretty good considering how tall the VRMs are on this particular Asus motherboard. Now, the motherboard uh, does stick sort of behind the radiator and fans a little bit, but that's okay because there's plenty of airflow and there's plenty of clearance. And again, this is a 360 millimeter radiator. If you're using a 280 millimeter radiator, you know, a wider radiator, ever how long you wanna use that, your tolerances are gonna be a lot tighter. I think you're only gonna be able to get away with a thinner radiator 
if you're opting for like the 280 or the 420, something like that. That said, you can put a four times 120 radiator here in the top. If you do, it's gonna restrict the front a little bit because I mean, look how much clearance you have, but uh, I could slide this radiator back just a little bit and put a four times 120 radiator in the front. That would be no problem. I've got the 240 millimeter fans installed in the front. If you do intend to use 340 millimeter fans, uh, the mounting holes are such that you have to remove this little bracket. So it sort of breaks the clean lines. I don't know. It's the fractal cases are like that. It's fine. It's another advantage of using 120 millimeter mounting thing that a way that I did because I can do, I can put it back assuming that I've routed my cables properly. Now you may have noticed that I used the red Chromax corners on my Noctua fan. That's a Redux fan, 1200 RPM. It's a reasonable choice for this application. Although perhaps a fan with higher static pressure would have been a better choice. And of course the red corners to trigger my enemies. Not really, it's just what I had on hand. So here we are, the build is more or less finished. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I do need to add a GPU and figure out what I'm gonna do with the, uh, the flex bracket. But overall the build is pretty much complete. And as you can see, I've got a lot of room for activities. So much room. I've also gone ahead and 3D printed my wheel adapters. These little things will let me use an office chair caster, like the standard wheels off of an office chair. You can order a five pack off Amazon or, or wherever. These are 3D printable. There's a file you can download. You can print these if you want. It works really well. I use this on the, uh, the Define XL and uh, the feet are the same uh, across the new sort of family of cases that uh, Fractal has been releasing. But these really big cases, you are gonna put it on the floor. The wheels give it a lot of extra clearance. And in general, I like having wheels on a case this big and heavy. I almost forgot the most important part. That's the most appealing. Right. Well, as you can hear, even when it's running, it's fairly quiet, but we need to do a little bit more burning testing. It's gonna be a story for another day. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quick look at the Define Meshify 2 XL from Fractal. See, cause there's Fractal in the background behind me. I'm signing out and I'll see you in the level one forums. If you build a system with one of these or one of their Fractal cousins, post pictures on the level one forums. We'd love to see. All right, I'm signing out and I'll see you later.